and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Whether this is your first time here or whether you are always here, welcome to worship in Bridge of Allen Parish Church. That welcome, of course, goes to those listening on the CD and the web as well. If you are visiting this morning, then please say hello to somebody. And if you are here regularly and don't recognize somebody, please go and say hello to them. Over the last few weeks during the service, we've reflected on some of the challenging things that have been happening in the news. It's a delight this week that the news has been a little less challenging. Although I'm sure, as we all know, as you look at the news, there is still always something to make you sad in the heart. When big things happen, I will always respond. But whatever is happening, there is always a light. There is always a light in the darkness, as we discussed last week. The light burns in the darkness, and we have hope. Let us take a moment to still ourselves as we come to worship Almighty God. Can you feel it? The spirit hovers over this space like a dove in flight. Can you hear it? The spirit offers a voice to us in whispered tones. Can you accept it? The Spirit seeks to inspire us and guide us in our living. The Spirit of God is here. Please stand as you are able as we sing in worship of God. Hymn 157. Sing of the Lord's goodness.
please be seated. Let us pray. When standing turns to movement, when darkness turns to colour, when silence turns to laughter, when ice changes to water, when chaos turns to cosmos, when seeds turn to fields, when pollen turns to honey, when bondage turns to freedom, when winter turns to spring, when deserts turn to meadows, when the night turns to day, when faith turns to questions, when prejudice turns to friendship, when war turns to peace, when bread and wine turn to communion, when water turns to baptism, when the church turns to community, when seed time turns to harvest. Lord, there we celebrate you. O oh Spirit, the energy, the doing word of God, the action, the activity of heaven, the potential, the power of love. Spirits, we celebrate your restlessness and your intent. Come and always be with us. Here and now, Lord, fill this place with your spirit. Stir our souls, move our hearts, inspire our imaginations. Unite us as we worship you this day. when we have labelled and judged and found others wanting, when we have ignored or bullied or not spoken up for the vulnerable, when we have disempowered or disenfranchised or destroyed, forgive us, free us. May the breath of the Spirit blow away our little boxes and our labels. Blow our minds with same and different, and all are welcome. May the warmth of the Spirit thaw our two cold hearts, thaw our stiffened joints into care and concern and action for others. May the power of the Spirit flow in and through us, refining and renewing and flow out from us as a source of blessing this day. May the community of the Spirit flow as we pray together with those words, all who have tried to follow Jesus through all times and all places have prayed together. As we pray together now, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning is the last of a short four-part series about us being alive in our faith. We've thought about being alive in the story of creation, how we are a loved part of creation, and we all have a responsibility to look after creation. We have thought about being alive in the adventure of Jesus, looking at the people and the situations that Jesus sides with, pointing us that we have to side with those people as well. We've looked at being alive in the global uprising, seeing that following Jesus is about doing small things with great love, rather than trying doing, to do anything to get ourselves great attention. And today we are thinking about being alive in the Spirit of God, being empowered by the Holy Spirit, the creative force of God, the things that includes and draws in. But when thinking about the Holy Spirit, it can be tricky to get your head around it. I'm not really sure what this is, but my mum bought it for me when I was about 12 or 13. And if it just sits, it's just kind of a yellow kind of pipe thing. 
do you know what it is? I, and it just kind of sits and it, it doesn't do much. But it can become alive. So as you gently move it, Can you hear that? Just gently, it just... <coughs> when it's used how it's supposed to be, it sings. It's full of movement, it's full of life. Now, of course, if you held us by the feet and spun us round, that's not the kind of singing that we would make. But when we seek God and look to do things that enliven, we become alive. We start to sing. We could just sit. This has been sitting in the centre cupboard in my childhood bedroom for maybe the last ten years doing nothing. But today it gets to do what it's intended to do. It gets to sing. So how many of us, when we think about whether we are alive, alive in the Spirit of God, have maybe been sitting in a cupboard for the last however many years? And if the Spirit can proverbially grab us by our feet and spin us around, we too can sing. And when we sing, we become part of the church. Not a building, but a group of people who seek to love the world as God has loved the world, shown through the life of Jesus. So we are going to sing together now. We're not going to swing each other round by the feet. But we are going to stand as we are able and sing hymn number I have no idea. I am the church, you are the... 204. Him 204, I am the church, you are the church. <laughs>
The reading this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21, and it's found on page 1093 on the Pew Bibles. Acts 2, 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all those who are speaking Galileans? Then how, how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontius, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them. They had too much wine. Peter addresses the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Thank you, Sandy. We stand together as we're able once more, singing hymn 600, Spirit of God Unseen as the Wind.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. To be alive in the Spirit of God is to be spiritual. This doesn't mean a generic, non-religious, but spiritual situation. But we are thinking of spiritual as an experience where we encounter and respond to the moving of the Holy Spirit, the breath of God moving in our world. In thinking about the promptings of the Holy Spirit, it's clear to me that that's what we've been thinking about for the past three Sundays. Listening to and responding to the Spirit, in many ways, is what it's about being a follower of Jesus. The text that we read today, the traditional Pentecost text, is very clear, but full of all sorts of bits of symbolism that need unpacked. The first thing to note about Pentecost and the events that happened in the reading is Pentecost is the Jewish spring barley festival. It's the festival of weeks. And it's held 50 days after Passover. And all those dates and explanations can be found in the book of Leviticus, in chapter 23. And so 50 days after Passover, when according to tradition, the Torah was given, the law of Moses, the first five books of the Old Testament. And it's a time to celebrate and to meditate on the Exodus story of Sinai and the gift of the law. We note that the devout Jews were in Jerusalem for this festival. People from across the Jewish diaspora throughout the Roman Empire came back to Jerusalem for this important time. And as you may guess from such a clearly indicated and important time in the Jewish year, the account is steeped with all sorts of biblical allusions. The violent wind that blows may be an echo of God's ruach, the wind, the creative force found in Genesis chapter 1. The tongues of wind and fire take us back to Sinai and the Torah and Moses being given the law. Around the time of Jesus, the Jewish philosopher Philo wrote that having no mouth, God made a miraculous sound in the air, a breath, articulated into words, turning the air into fire, which those far away could hear as clearly as those nearby. This voice, sounding from the midst of the fire from heaven, became articulate in the native tongues of the hearers. Rabbi Yohanan said that the voice of God in this instance became 70 languages. The number of Gentile nations. The law was addressing everybody. So in understanding the events of this Pentecost narrative, it can be seen that the story proclaims that Jesus, ascended and exalted, is the means by which the Sinai covenant, that means the covenant made with Moses and all of the descendants of Moses, is made available to all people. We also notice within the story, there is a move from private to public space. The disciples were together in one place. 
and they end up in discourse and proclamation and argument with a cosmopolitan crowd of people not just shut away in an utter room one might wonder if excuse me if at the beginning of this they were breaking bread together they were eating they were sharing a meal after all in the gospel of luke we've already been told that jesus shared his last supper in luke 22 with the disciples that the risen jesus shared a meal with his disciples in Luke 24 by the beach breaking bread and fish together so it would seem reasonable that when they got back together again that they ate together when we meet up with friends we eat together it's possible that the meal they would have eaten at Pentecost is a direct extension of the meals that Jesus and his disciples ate throughout the Luke narrative. Eating together is an act of community. It's an act of unity. Eating together is very clearly an act of peace. The peace idea seems to tell us that there's something else going on. Pentecost took place in Jerusalem within 50 days of Jesus' arrest and trial and crucifixion. It's an international city full of international people who have travelled. Jesus' followers... They were followers of, by this point, an executed criminal. But there is peace in what they are doing. But within that, they are about to go public, asserting that in his name, anyone who calls out will be saved. If you were in their position, what would you expect to happen? What would be in your head if you were Jerusalem's head of crowd control? It's clear that this is a situation that's ripe for conflict. But what actually happens is something different. First, the followers have to wait. They cry out to God, And they watch and pray. And then the Spirit comes when God sends it. It comes when it's needed. It doesn't come a moment before. It's not something they are able to store up. It doesn't come too late. In all of this tension, the Spirit comes when it is needed. In the account, Luke talks about the instructions through the Holy Spirit. Maybe these could be described as marching orders. A direction to walk in. A path to follow. If we think back, Jesus received his mandate and mission as he was caught up, self-immersed in the flood tide of the Spirit at his baptism. And at the birth of the church... The church is caught up and immersed in that same Holy Spirit. But when we're looking for the Spirit, when we're looking to be enlivened and empowered, the waiting can be difficult. Things come to us very quickly in life now. If you want to know the news, you don't have to wait for six o'clock. You don't have to wait for the CFAX page to roll round. You can reach into your pocket and find the news. But when waiting for the Spirit, we have to wait. And as we wait, 
we can be acutely aware of conflicts within and beyond our churches. But how do we wait on that spirit in this covenant of peace? The spirit who transcends and crosses the barriers that we often falsely put in place that separate us. How do we, in wanting an instant answer or looking for something, how do we proactively listen for the Spirit? And how do we make sure that we are actively listening and responding to the Spirit rather than thinking, ah, that's a good idea, I'm sure that was the Spirit, and going off and doing what we think we should in the first place? But also, what happens if you and a neighbour hear different things? Then what do we do? I'm absolutely certain there is no black or white answer to this. There are, of course, shades of grey that arise because we all find it very difficult to remove ourselves completely from our own agenda and our own preoccupations and our own prejudices when we're trying to listen to the Spirit. But I think there is one thing that can certainly help. As we look at the Spirit of God, the Ruach, the breath of God, the Holy Spirit, as we look at the way it's described in the Bible, We see it described as many things, as wind, as breath, as fire, as cloud, as water, as wine, as a dove. All these things are alive and vibrant. In whatever position they are writing, from whatever context, the various biblical writers are telling us that the Spirit is an invigorating, animating, purifying, mysterious, moving, joyous thing that spreads peace. The Spirit draws people in. It includes the outcast. The Spirit at Pentecost undoes the separation by language that happened at the Tower of Babel. The Spirit is alive and it includes... it maybe helps to look at what it is not or what it is not to be part of the Spirit when we find ourselves or maybe others being petty or hostile or judgmental or cold or bureaucratic when we do these things that stifle and hamper then these cannot be seen to be part of being alive in the Spirit Simply, when something isn't life-giving, then it probably isn't spirit-driven. And when we find ourselves in those life-sapping and difficult places, what should we do? Sometimes it feels as if we should forge on and push our own agenda. But is that right? Should we just push on without seeking the Spirit? No. This is the exact moment when we need to stop. To wait patiently and prayerfully. As the disciples did. Wait. Be prayerful. Exist in fellowship. Speak to the people around you. Talk it through. Listen in the silence. Know that silence might be an answer. But know that the Spirit will come. I fully believe that the Spirit will come and will draw us to life. And that the Spirit has come and is drawing us to life building us into a new life that is fully alive but only 
if we are willing to move from our own agenda to one that waits and responds to God. It is, of course, possible that the Spirit has stirred something up in us and we've been ignoring it. We may have been given directions and have decided that it's our own path that we will follow. So as we go home today, we must wait and listen and try to find answers to these questions. How are we going to make time to listen? What have we already heard the Spirit say? What areas of life are we listening out for some direction in? How do we make the following of the Holy Spirit our reality? How do we become alive in the adventure of the Holy Spirit? God often poses more questions of us than than answers we are given. There is often not a clear way. But when things look muddled, when things look difficult as we go forward, listening to the Spirit, seeking the guidance and the prompting of the creative force of God, leading us to be alive, leading us to what is full of life. That is the only response. Amen. We sing together hymn 623, standing as we are able. Here in this place, new light is streaming.
please be seated. As we think of the new light streaming in, as we think of the light shining in the darkness, our offering for the work of the church at home and abroad will be uplifted as the choir sing a new commandment. dedicate our offering. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have filled us with your Spirit. You have made us stewards of creation and stakeholders in the universe. You have called us to be responsible citizens who care for our planet. May we guard the earth and all its creatures the world and who, all who live in it. And may we work for justice, peace and harmony so that all may live together, sharing the abundance that God has given. Spirit of God, bless what we have given today and open our ears and our eyes as we seek to follow your guidance. God of this world. We seek peace and rest for all people. People who are fighting each other. People who are hungry. People without homes. People who are lonely. God, may your spirit, your energy, Help us recreate the world so we can help and care and renew all the people of the world. We seek justice and healing for all people who are very close to us. Our families and friends, those who are ill, those who need our help in some way. God, may your spirit, your energy, enable us to reshape the world so that love binds us all closer together. God who meets us here, 
We seek your blessing on our small town and our wider community and give thanks for our friends and neighbours. Those who add colour with flowers. Those who build our community. Those who serve others. All those who try to make wherever we live a more just and merciful place. All those who are and help us to become alive in the Holy Spirit. Bless us and all those we know and love today, Lord. And all those whom we don't. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Freedom from fear. Freedom from despair. Free to live in a world that is just and full of mercy. That is what it is to be alive in God. For all people that we know and love, and all those whom we don't, the song that is sung is alive and full of freedom. We close our worship this morning, standing together as we are able, singing hymn 622. We sing a love that sets all people free. Thank you.
set free God's justice, move into Jesus' future. And may the Creator pursue you, the Saviour dance with you, and the Spirit sing in you. And as you sing and dance with the Spirit, may the peace of Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. And may he guide you through the wilderness, and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once more into his arms.